because there's going to be terrible darkness in your life and it's going to make you cynical and bitter and it could easily be that you're just not looking at it enough because if you looked at it enough and you didn't shy away and you brought everything you had to bear on it, you'd find that there was more to you than there was to the horror. Obviously the horror that Dr. Peterson is describing in this clip is Arma Free Multiplayer Scripting. Have you ever made a mission or a mod for Arma 3 which had custom scripts and behaviors and it worked perfectly fine in single player, but then you decided to show it to your friends on multiplayer and you just embarrass yourself because it just didn't work? It happened to me a couple of times when I was learning Arma and it's because my scripts weren't compatible with multiplayer. So I did some research and hopefully I can help you avoid those mistakes as well. I wanted to make this video for a long time, but I wasn't sure if I should. Last time I worked on it, Arma Reforger came out and it seemed like there is no need for this tutorial anymore. So I just continued working on my projects, including mods for Arma that you are seeing in the background right now. Uh, but eventually, it seems that Arma 3 is not going anywhere, so here we are. Now Arma has its problems and it's not easy to grasp, but to be honest, the design of networking is actually very very smart. It makes a lot more sense when you actually learn it and understand how it works. But let's talk about the basics first. So, in most multiplayer games, there is always a server. And really, it's just a computer somewhere to which your game has to connect for a multiplayer session. The server basically distributes information over the network and controls the state of the game. Information such as if the mission has started or which mission are we even playing, stuff like that. And then there is clients, which basically are the computers of all the players that have connected to the multiplayer session. And clients both receive and send information to the server. And that can be information such as their current location in the 3D world, which way they are pointing, which way they are going, uh, what gun they are currently using, stuff like that. So, of course, there's many, many more. And so the server has to grab all this information, distribute it to all the clients connected, so that every player can see the same outcome on their screen. And by the way, this is not just for Arma. It's a very typical design for most multiplayer games. However, for such a complex game, it's not very obvious which connected machine controls specific objects or effects in the game. Some things are more relevant to a specific client and some are not relevant at all. Let me explain. To understand this, we have to talk about locality. In a way, it's a term that describes what is and what isn't local for a specific machine. But what does it mean? Take this car as an example. Let's say you just played Wasteland and you bought it from a dealership. This car is now local to you because your computer spawned it in the multiplayer session. Only you and your computer control it. For other clients, we say that the car is remote because a different computer owns it. And your computer now has to send some information about it so that other players can also see it the same way. Stuff like its direction or maybe you change the color and now it's blue and which way and how fast the car is moving. By the way, it takes some time for all this information to travel over the internet, so other clients will often estimate where your car is going to be in the upcoming frames until they receive an update from you. They already know which way and how fast your car is going, so it's relatively easy to make predictions. However, they are not always accurate. For example, you might turn or stop your car and they will not know about it until they receive an update over the network. And if you play Arma in multiplayer, you probably know this effect as desync. What else is local? For example, your player character, your weapon, and any items you might throw. It's because these are some of the things that you created or control in the multiplayer session. But to make things more confusing, locality or ownership can also change. For example, your friend wants to borrow your car. The car is local to you, but the moment he enters the driver's seat, it's transferred to him. It's not local to you anymore, it's local to him. Why? Because now he controls it. Otherwise, every time he turns his steering wheel, he would have to wait for your machine to update the car's movement. Can you imagine how awkward it would be to drive a car with a delay of a couple hundred milliseconds? And of course there's more scenarios, for example, all objects created in the Eden editor when making the mission are by default local to the server, so they're remote to all the clients. And to be honest, this page in the documentation actually explains this pretty well. So 
where you might wonder why is it so important. Well, trying to make your scripts work in multiplayer can be frustrating, unless you understand which machine executes the code and when, and if the effect is going to be local or global. Global basically means that it's on all connected machines, and local, as I mentioned earlier, is relevant to only one specific machine. You might be confused why I'm defining what local means again, and you're right. You see, your car is global because it exists in multiplayer for other players, and they can see it or interact with it, but it's local to you because you and your computer controls it. However, when we say that an object or effect is local or exists locally, it means that it only exists on a specific machine and other machines, other players are not aware of it. Visual effects like debris is a perfect example. It really is enough that clients know that an explosion occurred, so they can all just generate the effect on their own end. That allows some clients to have less detailed explosions, to save performance for example, and others can install the cool client-side explosion mods. So when you're browsing the Arma 3 documentation, you actually will come across those icons right here. And what they actually refer to is exactly what we just talked about. The first two refer to the arguments of a scripting command, specifically for objects whether the object has to be local, or can it be either local or remote. The next two, with the letter E for effect, describe if the effect of the scripting command will be local or global. And then the last one just means that the command has to be run on the server, and then the server will just update all the clients if necessary. This is mostly used for important effects that matter globally, like changing the weather, time of day, or even changing the relations between factions. Let me show you some examples. Some time ago I had a chance to work on this SRV mod by Xavalova, and one of the features is that you can put on a camo net. However, you probably don't want to be able to drive with the camo net on. So I made a script that basically sets the fuel to zero when the camo net is put on, stores the previous fuel level in the memory, and then resets the fuel to that value when you take the camo net off. It's a simple way of preventing the engine from starting at all. However, it turned out that it doesn't change the fuel level in multiplayer. Why? It turns out, the set fuel command in Arma requires the vehicle to be local, even though the effect is global. So the fuel level wouldn't change unless the driver, or whoever the car is local to at this point, puts the camera net on. But there is a way to work around that, which you might know from my other videos. There is a command called remote exec, and it basically does what the name states. It executes a command remotely. And by using the vehicle as an argument here, I am able to run this command on the machine that this car is local to. In that switch you saw in the intro, I use remote exec to make sure all interactions disappear after switching it on. This time, by passing zero as a second argument, I am telling all connected machines to run it. And I have to do this because remove all actions has a local effect. So if I wanted to apply to everyone and not just the person that runs the command, I need to run it with remote exec. Fun fact, the third argument in remote exec indicates that if someone joins the mission after the code is run, they will also receive the update. Otherwise, when they join the mission, they would still have the initial actions available. Even adding an action to an object also has a local effect, so the action will only be visible to the client that added it. It makes sense because sometimes you want some actions to be visible to specific users. So you might wonder, how do I actually run all this code that it makes sense? Well, relax and we're gonna go for some examples. So I have this code here, which applies a texture to an object. But Vestar, you might say, doesn't this command have a local effect? Yes, and that's the point. The code in the init field is run locally by every client and the server when the mission starts. So essentially, when everyone applies the texture locally, they will all see the same result without having to synchronize over the network. And that's how I turned the default cardboard boxes into presents for the Christmas app. There is the same command with a global effect as well, but imagine what would have happened if I put it in the init field. Every time a person joined the mission, it would have tried to reapply the textures and synchronize them for all players over and over again. It really is unnecessary and just adds more load to the game. But what if you want to run some code that has a global effect only when the object is initialized? 
you can still do it from the init field. The local command returns true if the object is local to the current machine. You can put it in an if statement and avoid reattaching the object every time someone joins the game. Here's a few other commands you can use to make sure you run your code on the right machine. I recently had a chance to work on this islet mod, which is a much more complicated example. I had to use the draw laser command because the laser is pretty custom, but as you can see, this command has a local effect and it has to be run on every frame. Now, running remote exec on every frame would be a terrible idea because that would just flood the whole network with my laser updates. So instead, when the keybind is activated, I use the set variable command to mark that my current character should have the laser on. The last parameter, which is true, marks that this value should propagate over the network. This way, other clients will be aware that my laser should be on. And then every client has their own local per frame handler, which keeps track of all the people that should have the laser on and then draws it for them using the draw laser command. So you see, the only information I had to send over the internet is that my laser should be on and other clients can apply the same effect on their own. So in conclusion, multiplayer scripting in Arma is basically a game of making sure that the effects that you're making with your scripts are being local or global where they should be. I know it's a lot and it might take some trial and error before you fully understand it and get it right, but you'll realize it makes a lot of sense and allows you to create cool experiences. After all, it's also what allowed me to make Batayar in the first place. I hope this video helped a bit to get you started. Leave a like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.